And these represent the four exiles, the exile of the body, exile of the mind, exile of the spirit, and the complete exile of everything. So now let's break this down in terms of what the exiles were. So the first exile, the exile of Babylonia, was essentially just a physical exile. And therefore, it represented the exile of the body. Because although they were in Babylonia, we know that the, Tal the Talmud was written there in Babylonia. So they were kind of like limited in where, what they could do, where they, had, where they were able to go. But at the same time, they were so prolific. So that's the first exile. The second exile is the exile of, of Sikhli, of uh, Persia and Medea, that they were in, in, in an intellectual sort of exile. They were challenged intellectually by the, by the Persians and, and the Medeans, and they had to overcome uh, that obstacle. But still, their spirit was free. And during the time of uh, Purim, where that whole miracle of Purim and Ahasuerus and, es and Mordechai and Esther were able to really bring out the spirit, so that transcended the Secha. And over here we've got, this, we've got the Greece that is called darkness. And what they did is that they infused this darkness. In other words, they said that it was light, but it was really an over-identification with the body, with the intellect. And so it got progressively more intense than the other exiles. And they really battled the spirit of, uh, of the Jewish people. And so during the time of, uh, of Hanukkah, the Maccabees had to overcome this, uh, this intense spiritual oppression because they really wanted to really just control the spirit and control, as we said before, the light of the Torah. It's not so much the intellect of the Torah. You could have the intellect, no worries. But to connect to the spirit of it, that's something that they weren't into. And so that's why they had the, the miracle of Hanukkah had to do with the spirit. And that's the third exile. And the fourth exile is Hakol. That's the exile of Rome, which we are currently still in. Although Rome is no longer here, and Italy is not really a superpower any longer by any means. Uh, but at the same time, what Rome and, and what, what Rome kind of like brought to the world and brought that, that kind of uh, uh, sp uh, sp spirit that essentially is still the exile of what we call Edom and Esau. And we're still in that and we're coming out of it. We're at the cusp of it, at the end of it. Whereas Azar says that Ishmael, uh, that, the, uh, that the son of Abraham, Ishmael, because of him having a circumcision at the end of exile is going to have a very strong influence on the world. And we see the Muslim influence on the world is actually in a way stronger than the, uh, th than the uh, Roman or what we call the Western world is, it has uh, than, you know, on the world. And so that brings us to Hakol, everything. And because the exile of Rome really included it all. They oppressed us, they oppressed the world, but specifically the Jewish people. We were the nemesis and the destruction of the second temple was uh, was brought about uh, by the Romans. So they oppressed us in a, on a physical level, on an intellectual level, on a spiritual level. And so it, it was an overbearing, it is an overbearing exile that we're still overcoming. And so that brings us to the beautiful little dreidel over here. Because the good news is that it's all controlled by some one by something up there that's just controlling it all. And as we go through the cycle of exiles on the historical level, but also on the personal level, that we may, we may feel an oppression of physicality, or we may not feel good physically on one day, or we may f find ourselves um, cloudy in our mind, or then we, we find like our spirit is, is down because of whatever reasons, either outside of us or inside of us, and we may feel completely over, overtaken by something, we should know 
that everything is really transient, that exile is transient, but the one who is spinning it all, and, it's, and exile itself is, is controlled by the Creator, by God Himself. And it's a tremendously powerful lesson that we learn from here, that we may find that exile is just things are happening on, them, on their own randomly. And the word itself for random, mikre, is actually a very uh, dangerous word because mikre, or a coincidence, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything is meant to be. Everything is, like we learn, mikre is rak Hashem, is only from Hashem, only from God. So there are no coincidences and there's no such word in Hebrew as mikre. As, as coincidence. Mikre is the closest one that we have, but even Mikre is Rak Hashem. So realizing that everything, everything is really controlled from up above, we realize that we could only place our trust and have faith in the one up above and have that, that deep-rooted trust that if, we, that if we dig deep enough and we find that, that, that light inside of us, that jug of oil that is hidden, just like in the, in the story of Hanukkah, that jug of oil was hidden and it was very well kept, but it was there intact, even though everything around was destroyed and in shambles, representing exile, but there is still that deep, that, that deep connection that each and every one of us has. If we dig really deeply, then we're able to bring it out and thereby transcend the obstacles and the negativity that is all around us and really come to what? To redemption. Because